Warning, read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. We are going to walk you through how to properly set up a typical OxyFuel torch outfit. The first step is to inspect the cylinder valves for damage and for the presence of oils or grease, especially on the oxygen cylinder connections. Make sure the cylinders are secure and inspect the regulator connections and torch. Check for nicks or damage to O-rings or other seating surfaces. At a minimum, reverse flow check valves should be installed in the system. Flash arresters with built-in check valves provide an even higher level of safety. The area where you'll be working should be well ventilated. Now, make sure no one is in the path of the gas stream and slowly open the oxygen cylinder valve slightly to blow out any dust or debris. Dust or oil in an oxygen connection can be hazardous. Heat created by recompressing oxygen in the regulator when the cylinder valve is opened can cause dust or oil to burn, which could result in a regulator burnout or even an explosion. Now we'll attach and tighten the oxygen regulator to the cylinder. Position regulators at a slightly upward angle. That way, in the unlikely event that the adjusting screw were to blow out of the bonnet, it would be projected up away from the cylinder. This system is configured for use with acetylene fuel gas. Make sure the connection is clean and install the fuel regulator. Each type of gas requires a specific connection. Here we have a CGA 510 connection. There are several different acetylene cylinder connections. Never use a regulator designed for one gas on a different type of gas cylinder. The next step is to install the hoses. Inspect the hoses before installing them. Worn or damaged hoses should be replaced. Notice that the fuel hose has a left-hand thread connection, as indicated by the groove in the fittings. You can now attach the hoses. Make sure that you are using the correct hose for your application. Special T-grade hoses should be used if gases other than acetylene are used. Now we're ready to pressurize the system. Make sure both torch valves are closed and both regulator adjusting screws are in the out or off position. It's very important to open the oxygen cylinder valve slowly and allow the regulator to pressurize gradually. This minimizes the heat of recompression generated inside the regulator as we discussed earlier. Stand with the cylinder between you and the regulator. If a regulator were to explode, it is least likely to explode toward the inlet pressure. Now open the oxygen cylinder valve fully. Oxygen cylinders are fitted with double seating valves, so opening the valve all the way helps prevent leaks. It also ensures maximum available gas flow. Adjust the oxygen regulator delivery pressure to approximately 10 PSIG. Next, open the acetylene cylinder about three-quarter of a turn. That's enough to provide sufficient gas flow while at the same time allowing the cylinder to be shut off quickly in an emergency. If the cylinder valve requires the use of a key or wrench, be sure to keep it with the cylinder. Now, adjust the fuel gas delivery pressure to 10 PSIG. Leak test all connections with an approved leak test solution or oil-free soap and water. Another method is to pressurize the system, then close both torch and cylinder valves completely and watch the delivery pressure on both regulators over time to be sure there is no pressure drop. If a leak is found, it can usually be stopped by simply tightening the connection. If not, the equipment should be taken out of service immediately and repaired. Now, adjust the regulator delivery pressures appropriately for the tip being used. Pressure requirements vary by tip size, style, and manufacturer. Miller-Smith torch tip charts can be found in the manual supplied with every torch or at MillerWelds.com. This oxyacetylene outfit is now ready to use. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in our How-To video series to learn more about how to safely and effectively use oxyfuel torches and other gas equipment.